from ultramegadeathray.com here. This is a follow-up video to my post about the PlayStation 4 event that happened in New York City this week. This is basically for me to give my impressions on the games that were announced during the event. So without further ado, let's get right to it. The first game that was announced is really interesting. It's this little title called Knack. It seems like this action-adventure platformer type of game that has the look and feel of a Pixar movie. A lot of the characters just kind of have this cutesy effect to them, especially the main character who is appropriately named Knack. Knack seems to be like this robot who humans created in order to fight off this orc army that the humans are at war with. Funny enough, as you'll see in the trailer, it seems to have this sort of moral ambiguity to it. There's a point within the trailer where you'll see one of the orc generals or leaders or whatever talk to Knack and ask him why he's working with the humans. I don't know if the story is looking to kind of take this Wally -E approach where humans aren't exactly pointed in this perfect light, if you will. It sounds really interesting. It looks awesome. It looks very, very impressive. In a lot of ways, it's a great way to show off what the PlayStation 4 can do, especially since Knack himself is kind of composed of a lot of different things, a lot of different particles or whatever he's made out of basically. He seems like he can change size, he can also absorb elements like fire and ice and lightning. He can even go into this phase mode where he can actually go through lasers. He just seems to have a lot of different powers in order to take on whatever comes his way. One thing I have to point out is that I really really appreciate having Jennifer Hale, otherwise known as Femme Chef in the Mass Effect series, narrating the beginning of this trailer. So check it out. War has come to our peaceful land. We must send our best to neutralize this threat. A veteran explorer, military might. Um, yes, Doctor. I would like to make a small addition to the team. Behold my greatest creation, Knack. Just go slow, little buddy. You'll be fine. He looks a little delicate to me. Knack is capable of explosive growth. He will be invaluable in the fight against the goblins. Knack, you're no human. Why do you work for them? Victor's up to something. The next step of human evolution begins now. The world is about to change, and he'll be the one who changed it. The next game shown really, really threw me for a spin. I'm of course talking about the next Killzone game, otherwise known as Killzone Shadowfall. As you'll see in the video coming up here, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. I've never been a fan of the Killzone games, I just never got into them really. This is the fourth entry in the series I know, and the whole idea is that there are these two warring clans that just absolutely hate each other. I know one of them who you fight against is called the Hellgast. It seems like in this game you're going to have both factions living in one city divided by a wall. Anyone who knows their German history during the Ronald Reagan era will know that's a recipe for disaster. So yeah, I'm going to shut up now and show you guys this video because it's just jaw-dropping. Mm -hmm. 
Traffic passing through here today. More than usual. They're drafting in units from all over. It's the waiting around that messes with your head. Guess now you're here, things start moving, huh? Nobody gets through without clothes. Back up! Back up! Let him through! Everyone, this way, sir. Side. Sorry, sir, just a formality. Okay, clear. Please proceed.
Next up, we have this awkward transition from Killzone to this new racing game called Drive Club. The moment I saw the footage for this game, I thought, oh, of course, it's a Gran Turismo game. What PlayStation system has gone without a Gran Turismo game? But, lo and behold, it's a brand new IP, even though it does seem to share a lot of similarities with the long-standing racing simulator. I'm not really much of a car guy or a racing fan, at least outside of Mario Kart, but I have to hand it to the studio, who are actually the same guys who made the MotorStorm series, for making a really, really realistic-looking racing experience. So yeah, if brand name cars that glisten in the sun when you wax them is your thing, then by all means enjoy. Next, we see Sucker Punch take the floor. As soon as I saw that there was a new Sucker Punch game coming up, I was just crossing my fingers just wishing, please be a new Infamous, please be a new Infamous. Thankfully, the gods have answered my prayer, and there is a new Infamous coming out called Infamous Second Son. You might be surprised to find out that we won't be continuing the story of Cole McGrath anymore. Instead, we get this punk-looking kid named Delson Rowe who lives in Seattle, which is also where the game is going to take place. The game's plot seems to get into the whole debate of freedom versus security, basically how much freedom are you willing to give up to feel safe and secure. It definitely looks really cool, although I might be a little biased because I'm pretty much a sucker for anything that deals with dystopian futures. Also, another thing before I show you guys the trailer is that it seems like our new protagonist, instead of using electricity powers like how Cole McGrath did, will be using fire or smoke. Basically, something ember related. So, yeah, enjoy. G6 status. G6 clear. G7 status. H1 status. What the hell? What was that? I, I, I don't know. B2 status. What should we do? B2 repeat status. On me. Keep your eyes peeled. Go. The DEP is in control of the situation. Up there! We got him! We got Chicken, B5, B5. Over there. Go, go. Cover me. I want him alive. The next game shown was a bit of a surprise to me. I am of course talking about The Witness by Jonathan Blow. 
He was the creator of the big indie game breakout title, Braid. He was also showcased in that documentary, Indie Game The Movie. So yeah, The Witness is basically if you cross a puzzle game with Mist, more or less. People are calling it a 3D exploration puzzler. So right off the bat, The Witness seems like it's going to be a far cry from Braid, when in a lot of ways it's actually very similar. Yes, it's in 3D, yes, it's in first person, but it is still a puzzle game at heart. The trailer that was shown during the event was absolutely amazing. I think a lot of it has to do with the music. It really touches in with my Irish roots, so of course I'm going to appreciate it, and I hope you do too. The next game that we get to see was actually presented by Yoshinori Ono of Capcom. I was so happy to see this guy up on stage. As some of you may know, he had a health scare earlier in 2012. He actually had to step down as producer of the Street Fighter series after that. But yeah, here he was up on stage and presenting this pretty cool looking game that seems to draw some comparisons to Dragon's Dogma. It's actually going to be a new IP called Deep Down, and it's also going to use a brand new engine called Panther Ray. It seems like the big deal with this new engine are the fire effects, which are pretty damn impressive and used in full force in the following trailer. Porking lines in the old market for one tenth the hassle of your empty venture. Why would he fall in him anyway? Let's find this bloody third gate.
next trailer that's coming up is the one I've been wanting to talk about the most. I am, of course, talking about the hacker-friendly open-world sandbox title, Watch Dogs. Ever since the first video that came out for this game, I've just been so excited. I just cannot wait for this game to come out. Now with the new gameplay footage that came out during the PS4 event, I am absolutely ecstatic and this game cannot come soon enough. This new footage presents a couple of new things that we haven't seen before. For one thing, it seems like you can actually stop street crime. Make no mistake though, this is vigilante justice, so the cops aren't going to stand for that and you'll have to stop them as well as stop the person who committed a crime. This is interesting to me simply because your character is now not just some punk hacker guy who's only looking out for himself. You actually have some invested concern with the city and you want to protect people who you believe deserve protecting. I stress deserve protecting simply because earlier in the footage you'll see your character actually hack into a guy's phone. When you hack into this guy's phone you can see his occupation and he has a high paying job and basically use the information from his phone to hack into an ATM, use his information and withdraw funds from his account in order to pay for whatever it is that you gotta do. I don't know if there's going to be a karma system put into play. I don't think there will be. I hope there won't be. I'm just really, really intrigued by a game that gives you so many options and allows you to take on situations differently and also basically gives you the power to control an entire city. So yeah, I'm just going to and let you get on with the video. Hi. This is Jonathan Morin, creative director on Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs Hyper-Connected World will redefine what you think about open-world game. For the very first time, not only you'll be able to explore the city at will, but you'll be able to tap into the privacy of everybody and control everything around you. Today, we want to give you a little taste of what it's like. Everything you're about to see is just another day in the city. There is no mission and no objectives. In Watch Dogs, when you use the profiler, you can invade the privacy of everybody around you. If someone has a secret, you're gonna find it. All the information you're gonna get will be useful to progress in the game. In this case, accessing a bank account. If you think you're alone, think again, you're not. There's always somebody out there. Other people are trying to use the CTOS for their own interest. You will never know where the profiler can lead you. In Watch Dogs, you're creating your own experience by tapping into people's lives. What's cool about it? is that the possibilities are endless and the gameplay extremely unexpected. I want to talk to you. I'll call the police. I swear I will. I'm not going to let you get away with it. Don't touch me. I'm warning you. You don't get to ignore me. Let me go. And you think you're so special, huh? Alex, no! Fuck off! Leave me alone! 911, please state your emergency. You're going to control the entire city of Chicago, and even the smallest thing will become a weapon. Stop! Stop where you are! 
when situations get out of hand, you would be surprised of how many options you have. enjoyed the demo. Keep following us to be the first to know about what's going on on Watch Dogs. Finally, we get to the end of the show and we see the CEO of Activision come out. I'm trying to think to myself while he's up on stage, what Activision game could he be announcing? It ends up being a Bungie game, actually, specifically the newly announced Destiny. This is the game which is supposed to be the MMO first-person shooter, even though Bungie doesn't like calling it that. We got a new video basically talking about the game and showing off some things here and there, but for the most part, I feel like a lot of people are still in the dark as far as what this game is really all about. Considering it's made by the same guys who did the Halo franchise and how ambitious of a project this is going to be, remember, this is going to be a 10-year-long project that they're working on here. Obviously, they have high hopes to make this into a mega-huge franchise. I have to wonder, though, with Destiny being announced at the PS4, if Microsoft is kicking themselves for not working up some new exclusivity contract with them. Who knows if this is even going to come out for the next Microsoft console. If it is, great. If not, then Bungie, that was a first-degree burn. So yeah, without further ado, enjoy the last video, guys. Hey everybody, it's great to be here. I want to tell you a little bit about what Bungie's been doing for the last few years. After Halo, we ask ourselves the question, what next, what's worth doing? When you have a studio with this much talent, what do you point it at? How could we take a genre that we know and love so well, the first person shooter, and turn it on its head again? And our answer is Destiny. Bungie's next great FPS. In Destiny, we've created a fantastic new universe for players to explore, full of mystery and adventure. We've built a persistent online world where players grow and customize their characters. And we focused from the beginning, not just on the great competitive experience that players demand from a shooter, but to make sure that playing Destiny cooperatively with your friends was gonna blow your mind. Destiny is going to be amazing on PlayStation 4. It's a great piece of gear. And we can't wait to see what PlayStation fans do when they set foot in our world for the first time. So that basically wraps up the PS4 lineup that was announced. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Please click on the like button, subscribe, give me feedback in the comments section. I always appreciate that. Anything I can do in order to make these videos more awesome, I want to hear from you. As always, check out ultramegadeathray.com for all things geek media. This is David, signing off.